Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Wrap, brought to you by Michigan Medicine Headlines. I'm Dan Elman with the Department of Communication. Today, we're going to be joined by Sonia Jacobs, the organization's chief organizational learning officer, who will discuss professional development opportunities during COVID-19 and the importance of leadership during crisis situations. Before Sonia stops by, be sure to get caught up on all episodes of The Wrap you may have missed. You can find them on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or any other podcast hosting platform. New episodes debut weekly and can always be found as part of the headlines we can review. All right, let's bring in Sonia Jacobs. Sonia, thank you for joining us today. Can you first explain your role and the work your office does at U of M? Uh, Yes, and thank you, Dan, very much for the opportunity. And hello uh, (laughs) to the front uh, line and everyone else uh, joining uh, today and or listening in. Uh, I have the great pleasure of being the uh, Chief Organizational Learning Officer and the Senior Director for Faculty and Leadership Development. So in, inherent in there are three roles, um, all of which really do focus on what I believe to be the greatest job ever, which is helping to build the capacity of our greatest resources, which is our people. You know, developing programming and curriculum and strategy uh, to help our uh, frontline, as well as our faculty and leaders, uh, build skills, develop, and really bring their best selves uh, to work every day. That's outstanding. Now, we're entering month two of the COVID-19 crisis. What is different for you as a leader at U of M during this time? Well, I've actually lost track of time, so (laughs) I have to ask myself, (laughs) week what are we in? Well, now we're going by months because I think Uh, we've all lost track of the weeks. Yeah, absolutely. And I will tell you, uh, lots have changed Uh, for me personally. uh, Really, uh, I've been a person who's always thrived on change. I love that. And even for me, change has been overwhelming uh, in these unprecedented times. Um, It's caused me to be a lot more nimble and flexible. And one of my new words that I've been picking up uh, uh, from some members of the team is pivoting. I mean, we have had to, as leaders, truly pivot. Uh, Not only are things changing daily, they are changing by the hour. Mm -hmm. And so uh, needing to be able to work sometimes with limited information, dealing with a lot of ambiguity and remaining remaining calm, you know, uh, in the midst of this, uh, yet being decisive. Uh, So lots has changed uh, for me Uh, and the need to be humble the need to be vulnerable because we're all going through this together, you know, Mm -hmm. and uh, we see the best of each other, I think in this time. And and I'm really grateful. Uh, So albeit a change, a major change, it's really made me be a lot more grateful uh, for those around me. Yeah. I was going to ask you sort of what are some of the key takeaways? And I know you've already sort of touched on that about leading through this crisis, and maybe not just from a leadership perspective, what are some of the key takeaways you would have just for employees who are going through a time that they've really never gone through before? Yeah, uh, I'll start from the employee uh, standpoint, and I'll put myself in those shoes, and then I'll move Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the leader uh, perspective. Uh, One key takeaway is to allow yourself to be human, okay? Uh, These are very emotional times that we're going through. Uh, Seek resources and support. I remember uh, just a couple of days ago, I held an all staff meeting and we were in this new Zoom environment, which is quite different for me. Um, But for a person who is very, very extroverted, it was helpful to see those faces. But I started that meeting with sharing my own personal story you know what i am going through Mm -hmm. during this time because that impacts me and who i am and and what i'm bringing if you will uh to the table on that uh day and so it's important where you feel safe and comfortable you know to be able to share and then also take advantage of the resources that are available to us 
you know, for stress and well-being. Um, I oftentimes think about, you know, what we provide to support the staff, the front line, but we also have to avail ourselves of that as well. One of my key takeaways uh, as a leader uh, through uh, these unprecedented times is really the need to be calm and decisive. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, those around us are really looking at us and listening to us. So our body language is extremely important. People want to know things are going to be okay. And I think also people want to know they have someone that's there to support them. And so being calm and decisive, I think, is extremely important. Also, transparency. And, you know, people define that word in a lot of different ways, you know. But for me, it is sharing what I can share, being very clear about that, asking, you know, for questions of uh, clarification, but being okay to say, I don't have that answer. I will get that answer. I will keep you updated and provide you with the most uh, up-to-date information. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's all people want to hear, you know, yeah. and, and to know that they have uh, been heard. Yeah, they don't want to have it feel like information is being kept from them. Right, right. So one of the things you mentioned is sort of allowing yourself to be human and to have emotions during a very difficult time. Uh, what would you say in terms of self-care, um, or other aspects that you're doing for yourself while sort of social distancing and, and staying in the house. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, I am an extrovert. I need to see people and I need to interact with people. I have found so much joy in going to the mailbox mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and or talking to my neighbor next door, my three-year-old uh, neighbor. But um, all jokes aside, uh, my husband and I have been pretty diligent about self-care, you know, uh, during this time. So we have, to the extent possible, when a meeting does not get in the way, we'll have like yoga uh, at a set time. And then I am really diligently working out every evening because we need that. You know, we need ways to decompress. Get out, take a walk. I've taken many of these uh, virtual calls while walking, you know, so I need that to get out and clear my head. Um, and get some exercise. And so it is important in whatever form people take uh, to practice self-care, we must do that uh, so that we can stay sane in this time. So let's transition a little bit from the personal side to the organizational side. And, you know, it's not always a, a positive topic right now, but uh, there was announcements last week about the need to drastically cut spending across the organization. Are there things that faculty and staff can be doing to further their pro professional development while watching their spending and sort of cutting back on some of those dollars? Absolutely. And I have to say, I am so proud of the faculty development, organizational learning, and organizational effectiveness teams who have really rallied to move a significant portion of our professional and career development programs to a virtual environment. Uh, most recently, uh, we um, announced a series of complementary professional development uh, programs across 11 different domains that individuals can take advantage of uh, faculty, staff, and learners. Uh, we have our development journeys listed on our website, and please do uh, forward the websites um, to our listeners and viewers. But there is a vast amount of professional and career development that one can take advantage of that's free. And we are committed to do what we can to continue to add content there uh, in the absence of the ability to go to a professional uh, conference. Yeah. So where do you see professional development moving at U of M when you sort of fast forward a year? Where do you see organizational learning and, and how do you sort of foresee this new normal? Yeah. Uh, if I had my crystal ball, you know, we'd back, 
be back to, you know, the in-person uh, classes. And to the extent that we can and allowing for appropriate social distancing, we'll get. Uh, this is uh, what I I uh, think is, you know, the need for us to be able to have a short term view and a long term. View. You know, we will continue to leverage technology uh, to provide development, you know, continuing to raise awareness and build skill using technology to simulate to the extent that we can the environments we would have had if we were in an instructor led program, you know, using Zoom for breakout so people can come together and have conversation and network and, and dialogue around uh, topics and concepts, but then come back to the larger room, you know, for the debrief mm -hmm. uh, to do what we can to put exercises in uh, that virtual environment that will still allow me to practice this new skill uh, that I have learned, but also stay connected. Because that to me is really important, you know, in our ability to build relationships uh, with our colleagues. And I imagine in another year or so, we will have many more blended professional and career development opportunities where we continue to leverage technology to the extent uh, that we can, but we still have those in-person elements uh, to mm -hmm. them as well. So it's all about sort of adapting and pivoting, which goes back to the beginning of the conversation. Absolutely. We will continue to pivot. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sonia, for providing this information to our faculty and staff. It's essential for everyone. And I know it seems to be changing, as you mentioned, by the hour. So yes. uh, we will continue to share information as we get it. If you're looking for more coverage of COVID-19 and its effects at Michigan Medicine, headlines had you covered this week. For instance, the newsletter featured an inside look at the activation of the RICU, or Regional Infectious Containment Unit. It was also a shout out to the Environmental Services team, who is on the front line of patient care right now. Readers learned about med students who have volunteered their efforts in a variety of ways, and Virtual Care outlined how their efforts have surged in recent weeks. Find those stories and much more at mmheadlines.org. That's mmheadlines.org. All right, it's time for the weekly trivia contest. Last week, we asked listeners, physician assistant Cecile Hollinshead recently created photo mosaics of employees who work in which department? The answer is the emergency department. Congratulations to Deborah Birchie, a nurse in the UH PACU, who sent in the correct answer. Deborah, a member of the Department of Communication, will be in touch shortly to help you claim your prize. Now for this week's question, here's Sonia. How many nurses volunteered to staff the RICU when it first opened? Once again, how many nurses volunteered to staff the RICU when it first opened up? You can find the answer in this week's headline story. And once you know it, send it to headlines at med.umich.edu for the chance to win a prize. Thank you so much, Sonia, for joining us today. And as always, thank you to all of our viewers and listeners for everything you are doing for patients, families, and each other. We'll see you next week.